This is the sound of worlds beyond number. In the shrine of the great spirit Orima, shrouded in darkness, the only light issuing magically from those artifacts of our traveling companions, the door shrouded in vines and leaves, Ame, Suvi, and Ursulan, and the fox behold the massive image of wild vine hair, the relief in stone of the great spirit Orima, her feet as sharp talons, and the branches and vines of the forest echoing out from her. At the altar in front of that carving, there is a small block of incense and a single bowl filled with a humble meal as offering. Orima's voice snakes out with venom. My goal is not to harm those people, but I am mighty. When I am led upon the world, I will be vast. Many will come to my aid as I approach. But I will tell you this. Whatever harm befalls poor Talon will not be my heart's desire, but it will be punishment deserved enough for what they let befall my husband. If you will not release me because you fear the people of poor Talon, then we are at an impasse. For as you cannot seem to find it in your heart to let me free, I am certain then that I cannot find it in my heart to let you walk from this shrine alive. Anyone who wants to can make any kind of check for gathering information if you would so desire. Oh, what a terrible roll, a 12. Again, Sue, you can continue to speak. You don't know what's going on with this, yeah. whether you were put on mute or not. Look, it's very obvious I don't have Anything good to contribute. And I think she's just muttering under her breath. We, understand. we know what's going to happen. She will kill countless thousands of people. And maybe it is the fault of the spirit that allowed himself to be trapped in the first place. Hmm. Have Ursulan and Suvi interacted with the plant spirits in any way? Because I think... Ursulan is a bit in his own space, but the threat to Ame's life kind of uh, uh, zooms him into the present a little bit and is now actively give me, seeking danger. Give me, give me perception. Oh, and I actually have advantage. Uh, that's a natural 20. Oh, shit! <laughs> More than 30 uh, moving creatures are outside of the shrine. Ooh. You hear them rustling. You hear the weight of their steps. And on a nat 20, I will tell you that these things are called Undre. Undre? Undre. Uh, Undre is a word which to like which to mortals, like speaking either imperial or some other language, would sound very like mystical. Uh, you would not have that association with it because just in your language, it means stranglers. Oh, shit. Whoa. Hey, can I... Can I cast a little identify on uh, the like the shrine and in, like that setup that somehow is keeping her from the world? What's the casting time on identify? <laughs> One minute, unless I use it as a ritual. And it's eleven. Okay, so you can start casting. Identify yeah. Now, Ame, were there any rolls from you? I had a fourteen on a survival check to see where is her spirit housed right now? Beyond. Like, 
her she is a great spirit so she can have her sight or her voice or her eyes or her hearing go out into the mortal world wherever she wants it can be in umora it can be in the vast realm of the spirits it can you know but her, her true self uh seems to be unable to appear here and you see so the reason she's asked you to take the offering off the shrine is the offering is a very good offering. And like a lot, like Orima is a spirit that is not just like offered prayers, but is also propitiated. Some spirits uh, are so nice that you could just get to have kind of like a prayerful, thankful relationship with them. And other spirits you need to keep satisfied. Uh, that offering being... Uh, there's a small bowl uh, with a lovely little home-cooked meal in it. Mm. If we beg aid from you and time, would you entrust us to free your husband? Give me an insight check. God, that's a nat one. Oh. Can I make uh, an insight check? Yeah, give me an insight check. Modify 20. Oh. She scoffs. Uh, Ame, uh, your your training is working here, but you already see, you know, in all the training Grandmother Ren gave you growing up, she was like, when you talk to great spirits, it can start to go pretty bad. Like working working with smaller spirits is all there's there's um, they can be hostile, but you, when I you, when yeah when you're a witch of the heart. It's very easy to be heartful when something can't eat you. And then when something can, it gets very... So just this thing being like, well, it seems like we're at an impasse, but I'll just kill you. And I think you're just realizing like, it's almost like you're a textbook and you're like, okay, we're in the bottom five worst options of the flow tree. Right? Like, yeah. I'm still in my training, but it's starting to go pretty bad. I have never done this before. I am still not fully accepted into my role, I can barely don the title of witch of a small little province, much less broker the, the fate of an entire city. But you have asked the question. You have asked. You In the face of, of her saying there's an impasse, you have done your witchly duty of like negotiating the boundaries between the spirit and the world of mortals. And you see that in her scoff, you miss it, because I think you're just- I am so scared. You, you see, actually, you look down and see the fox has wrapped around one of your feet and has his ears back against <laughs> his head. And for the first time, you see the fox just sort of staring, thousand yard stare out, just dissociating. Oh just, no! He's like, he's like, this is really, you know, this is bad. This is really <laughs> bad. Um, Ursulan. I nudge uh, him with my toe. Um, uh, on that modified 20, um, she scoffs at the idea, but you can hear in her voice, we don't let her out, she kills us. We let her out, she kills thousands of people. She kills thousands of people, but there's also a part of you that goes like, well, wait a minute. She, the world where she just kills you for, for not doing what she wants is really bad for you. And, and you can kind of tell there's some part of you, of your, you just find a piece of your spine again. And you go like, okay, so we're all dead. And now there's still nobody to help you. Like you're, we're all dead and you're trapped in this shrine or, or just trapped on the other side of the shrine in the world of spirits. So it's a, it's a big threat that really could do a good job of rattling you. But ultimately, like for all of her venom in her voice, there's something where you're just like, well, that doesn't get you, that moves you so far away from what you want. Yeah, Ursuline, say it the nice way before I threaten this bitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, great spirit. What Ame is saying is, what Ame is saying is the best offer that you have. You are more than welcome to end us. We will... Suvi. <laughs> Suvi. You say Suvi and you see, she goes, What, what is Suvi? What? Uh, you look over at Suvi. Suvi's pendant has changed color. 
her sapphire raindrop amulet has become a darker shade of blue and you can see is drinking up light. It just looks like there's a little bit of shadow around it. There's like an almost imperceptible little piece of wind. Bria's gasping over the corner. (laughs) No, I'm being very normal and chill. (laughs) Brennan, don't tattle. (laughs) The listeners can't see what I can see. Ar- Ar- arcana check? Uh, uh, yeah, you can give me Arcana if you want. Uh, but also, I would say, you wait, give me actually insight first. Okay. That's another nat one. <laughs> <laughs> you got no idea. You're like, you know that Arima, like, yeah. Suvi's in the shrine. What You don't know what's yes. going on. Uh, but you can give me uh, give me Arcana as well if you'd like. Uh, 15. Um, I'm going to say you become totally distracted from everything in the room as you're just, you I, you can feel sweat running down your face. You can, your your body is entering kind of like a- Right now I'm just trying to focus on breathing and breathing out. I nudge the fox with my toe as I'm not sure if I'm trying to comfort myself or him. You look up, you look at the bowl on the altar. It hasn't crossed your mind before. Um, as you're looking at the bowl, um, you finally like take a better look at it because the outside is white, but you look over the edge at the interior rim uh, and see the little crest of, uh, you see a little uh, top like hidden partially by the food inside uh, of like some rice and eggs and other things like that. Uh, you see uh, a little rooster's crest and you've washed that bowl hundreds of times. Uh, Ursulan, you look and perceive that pendant doing that, and Orima says, And then to me, it is the, uh... You knew Grandma Wren? Grandmother Wren. Yes. I knew her well. She was my... My mentor. She's gone now, and I am... The Witch of Toma. <laughs> Why are we negotiating with her? I think I'm on mute so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Tell her that if she wants her husband alive ever again, that she's going to let us out because I can guarantee fucking tea if she thinks, no, there's something happening here because she's, she, I heard it. I could hear. I can hear. I don't if know why she can't hear me. If you respect Grandmother Wren. Oh, my God. And her Fine. legacy. <gasps> Fine. Let's be nice. Please. Please, I beg of Mother. you. Ah. <laughs> um, as Suvi yells more, <laughs> Ursulan, you see that the, the sapphire pendant grows a little bit darker and drinks in a little bit more of the light in the room. Mm. There are no other spirits that can wield it. The Undrake do not have the strength to wield Wavebreaker. We have a spirit. We have a spirit, and you've told us how he can claim his breath again. The one who surrendered the sword at once? The one who put it on the altar? The moment it seemed that there might be some trouble in his way? I will turn her husband into scrap! (laughs) Yes, me. I'll do it. I will free Naran. Ursulan, the child of the Great Bear. Consider carefully. When you hear the venom begin to leave her voice. Their traps are cunning. Their nets broad, their fires burn hot and bright. Please, I understand that the witch is your friend. For you there is uncertainty if you can do what you say you wish. For me there is none. If you remove the offering from my altar and leave the sword with me, you can go. I will give you safe passage. You can know a life of ease. You need not trouble yourself with these things. 
Arima, what you say is true. I am trapped. Chains on either side. And leaving here would not be a life of ease. You have made clear that this might be not a way out, but my breath is in my honor. And this act, this choice to free your husband, it would bring me closer to that. And it would meet my friends are safe. Uh, and I'm gonna go and pick up the sword. Your husband will be freed. Identify concludes, and you behold an incredibly powerful piece of witch's magic on the bowl that um, is just a simple ritual of giving an offering to a spirit to keep it satiated. But in this instance, it is preventing Orima from manifesting in the world, which again is not, that sounds very like abjurative and restrictive, but you see it's it's not like, like a wizard would have built a wall here. This is more of a promise. It's like Orima's, this is not Orima's, her shrine is here and she can speak in her shrine, but this is the village of Lamry in the, in the land of Akam in the world of Umora. This is the mortal world. And so there's just sort of a deal here of like, oh, but the food's still here. You said you wouldn't, you said you wouldn't come through with the offering here. You wouldn't attack the people of this land while there was an offering. So in a weird way, it's almost like it's it's not a firm it's not like a barricade it's almost you almost think like a barricade could actually keep like arima could knock down this is like something a little bit just more clever if that makes sense uh and you do see that you're looking for sort of the lingua arcana you're looking for any kind of runes or something that would like spell that out for you um, and you don't see any you're sort of reading witch magic, which you haven't read for a long, long time. Um, you just see a little glimmering shape in the smoke, in like incense smoke. And the incense is not lit here, but there's still almost like magically a little bit of incense smoke uh, just in the shape of a rooster. I think there's a, a moment where Suvi like sees that and wants to feel it. And then just like all of the training sort of kicks in to keep her focused in the moment, she puts that love and longing and memory of Grandmother Renaway and does what a wizard does. 
which is look for a loophole in the deal. What can I do that fulfills this contract that keeps this bitch out? Uh, give me an arcana check. It would be so nice to roll well ever in my life. 12. It would be cool. 12. It would be, be so cool. cool. Um, I will say this on a 12. You start looking for a loophole. So again, the, the issue is like... Um, you're like, where's a loophole in the contract? Flip page, flip page, flip page. <laughs> Set your oven to 350 degrees. You know, and you're like, it's like, where is the... <laughs> so it's the language is so different that yeah. you're like, how do I take it? You know, it's, uh, uh, you know. But um, I will say, looking for a loophole within the contract, or and you also do, the Identify also sort of works on the carving behind, which you just see the carving is just an ancient piece of spirit magic. It's just, it's, you know, she, like, it's the same reason that names are important, images are also important. Yeah. Like, you believe that this spirit can see out of any of her eyes anywhere, depicted, drawn, carved, like, any idol to her is an extension of her power. Oh, I understand the removing of the face from the fountain so much better now. There you go. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, you also um, see something as well. On a 12, you don't get the loophole you're looking for. You're like, you, you don't see a way that you can get Orima right here. But there's something with that rooster. And... When Ame turned to leave, that's, you know how like when you walk by smoke, it'll just like move in the wake of you? Yeah. When Ame turned to walk, it rippled almost like it was following her. Like she could create something. Um, and I, a 12, like a 12 is not high enough for you to know why. You don't get the answer, but you do get the question. Mm. And the question you get is, if Grandma Ren passed, why are her spells still working? Uh, and I think just the turning on that puts her into auto autopilot and she'll turn and walk out. As we exit the shrine, I turn and I spread my arms and I clap twice and I bow and I cast a spell of mending and a gust of wind blows the detritus from around the temple, from around the altar. Stones clatter back into place. Carvings are shined up and Grooves deepened. The plants remain untouched, so there's still a wild beauty about it. The roots and the foundations and the twining vines around the columns. But anything that human would normally touch has been restored as much as I can. The wind whips up around Ame's hair. The stones move back into place. Something in your heart lets you know that you have done everything right. You care for the shrine. Your tending to it is itself a prayer. And as a young witch, it is the most meaningful sort of prayer. That which is practical, purposeful, to keep a place of importance clean and cared for. We have much work to do, and I have much to learn, but I can at least renew that promise. As you walk from this place, I think for Suvi and Ursulon, there's this huge offer made by Ursulon to take the sword and free Naram. But I think both of you look at your friend Ame, because after all, there is the, between the three of you as this group of friends, like, you know, Ursulon went off and was running around a calm, having these nightmares, you know, like saw some of the bad side of the world. And Suvi went to the great citadel and Ame stayed home. And I think you both look and see you like 
Suvi, you have your staff of the Citadel, and you have your golden pauldron. But I think you see Ame walk out of this shrine, and the wind kicks up, and you feel a breath from the forest of relief and acceptance. And you know that Ame is not an apprentice anymore. Without those words carefully chosen and interjected, it is possible you would never have arrived at the knowledge of the type of offer you could make to save Port Talon and potentially the spirit trapped within the sea. Well done, young witch. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You see serotonin (laughs) in my body. Yay! And you see the fox comes out and goes. We should never do that again. I'm going to pick him up by the scruff of the neck. Mm. You did this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I didn't do all that scary stuff. It was. Did you? Did you see her? She was a lady. She was the stone lady. I gently put the box (laughs) back down, (laughs) and I walk away. Are we in a village? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. You're in a village, the village of Lamry, somewhat on the, like the shrine sort of just outside the village in a place of honor, but also it's all overgrown with kudzu. So it's like very, um, it's wildly overgrown. All the people have evacuated or sadly not, but like most of the people have gotten out of here. I'm going to make a survival check for any sort of shelter in the area. Um, give me a survival check. Uh, big 12. Big 12. Um, Oh, excuse Look, me. Yeah. Big 13. Ooh. Ooh. Change everything. Change everything. <laughs> <laughs> Looking down the hill from the shrine, you see the sort of, they're kind of the most horrifying shapes, which are the places where kudzu has overtaken buildings because it's plant matter in geometrical forms, right? So like, it's the idea of like, oh, look at that big mound of green with a perfect angle of a long roof, you know, that yeah. like, like a long slanted roof. And uh, plants don't go that way. Plants don't go that way unless they're eating something that went that way. Um, so there are a couple of those that you know you'd probably be able to like kick a door open and find shelter inside of them. Yeah, hey, I'll hit the nearest one. Cool. Um, what are you doing? I'm so hungover and so tired <laughs> and just made a promise I don't know if I can fucking keep. Yeah, why Why did you do that? Why? Ask me after I've had a nap. We have to go back. Oh, oh I lied to steal again. <sighs> have some electrolytes. Give him the, the Shut wizard. Up. <laughs> right. um, Ursuline, as you're getting ready to head to bed, you do see that the effect on uh, Suvi's sapphire pendant has stopped. It is now just a beautiful sapphire raindrop. Has Suvi ever told her friends about yeah. the raindrop? Let me be very clear. No one's more surprised than I am that it was showing. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hiding it from oh, shit. everyone. So I like that it came out. Well, yeah, we've been marching for a day and a half. I wasn't thinking about that. Okay, we can say that it popped out yeah. unintentionally. Gotcha. So no, she hasn't mentioned it to anyone. Uh, in that case, Suvi, I think you notice that you're uh, you just sort of like like as you're coming into the village, notice that your pendant is uh, uh, showing. Oh fuck! Hold on. And I try to like slip it back. Do I catch any of the like? Give me, give color? me either Arcana or Perception, whichever one you prefer. We have to stop making me roll. That's a natural one. Right. Oh my god! Uh, <sighs> I'm gonna say we actually have to address these rolls all in a row. Um, give me a Wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Oh. Same died every night. Okay. Uh, 22. Great. Um, uh, and I want insight from Ursulan and Ame. Uh, dirty 20. Also dirty 20. Uh, give me a deception. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brandon, you gotta stop making me roll. 10. Suvi, you don't notice anything on your pendant, but you can put it, you, you can yeah, put it away. Yeah, I'm just as tucking you, it back. Your identify spell worked but you didn't, you didn't find 
a loophole. Your pendant came out. Some muting thing happened where you knew that this, this, you know, for some reason, I, and I guess you're assuming it was the goddess. It was like, I think she was just ignoring me, which is yeah. some real shit behavior. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think on Dirty 20s with Insight, both of you notice um, Suvi, uh, and I'll turn this over to you, Abria, but on those Dirty 20, the thing I know as a dungeon master mm. is that the emotional state that Suvi got into in that shrine, and I will say the mixture of the emotional and ideological state that Suvi got into in that shrine, uh, preempted losing track of her magic. That there was an element of losing of losing the grip there. Um, but I want you to describe, like, what does that look like to Ame and Ursuline on 20 insight checks? Yeah. Uh, I think this is the first really obvious sign that Suvi, for all of her training, is a very young wizard and can only really focus on one thing. After marching for a day and a half with Ursuline, like it's very obvious that her rage and indignation, all of that was the thing that was sort of keeping her aloft in the moment. So she clung to it to stay awake and alert in the event of a fight. But that means all of the subtlety and like intellect of her, the thing that makes her clever and good at magic had to be put away because she can't hold both. So you just see the scatteredness of her. We also talked about in this campaign, and the, these these homebrew rules are like forthcoming as you guys get a little higher in level. Ooh. But we talked about for witches and wizards having that like secondary ability score, yeah. you know, of like for witches, because their primary is wisdom, their secondary is charisma of like, yes, you're listening to the world of spirits. Can you do so without losing yourself, right? For wizards, it's intelligence, but that secondary one is wisdom, which is what that wisdom saving throw was about. And there's an element here, I think, of uh, actually. And you give me—I know you hate me asking for rolls. <laughs> give me one more insight check here. <sighs> Eleven. Cool. So you don't catch this, but there's a there's an element for both of you looking. Which is like, yeah, the, the flaw of a, a witch is all wisdom, but you need some charisma so that you remember who you are while you're listening to and mediating between everybody. And for a wizard, it's all about intellect, analysis, putting things together and solving puzzles. But of course, the shortfall is if you've shut off your ability to gain new information, aka wisdom, then you don't have, it's like trying to do a puzzle without having all the pieces. Um... You see a group of so uh, you, both of you observe Suvi going through through that, and you don't see the pendant anymore, mm. or so on. What do you do as you approach the village? Uh, Ursulon is going to kick in a door, mm -hmm. uh, first door he can find. Ursulon is desperate to be horizontal right now. <laughs> uh, he like yeah so. I'm kicking in the first door I can find, if only so we can have a moment of rest. Kick in the door, find a kind of uh, rotting vegetation through the broken windows, but otherwise a totally acceptable old. Uh, as you walk in here, you see the, the sort of dust covered uh, tables of an old tavern uh, that you can see got like abandoned so quickly that there is like rotting food on plates and like mold on glasses of cheap wine. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna find a table and just push all of the food and <laughs> everything onto the uh, onto the ground and then just take my cloak off, make a small pillow, uh, throw it on and just immediately uh, go supine across my hands <laughs> over my chest. <laughs> Uh, and just kind of half, uh, kind of glaze over, uh, just, <sighs> um, and, uh, I think Ursuline's not checking out, but just needs to be, uh, needs a break. Yeah. Suvi <sighs> walks in and is kind of like a dog sort of pacing 
uh, torn between also a desperate desire for rest, but a like the worry that like you know the like I can't take a nap right now. If I lay down, I'm going to bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of problem. So I think she's just kind of pacing around and doesn't know if she should try to recover at all or stay up. Sivy, I took a little nap in the temple, so why don't yeah. you rest your head for a little bit and I'll take first watch. We have to get back to the city. Absolutely. But when we go back, we need to know what we're doing. But first, rest. And thank you for coming to save me. Just don't make a habit out of it. Kill your fox. <laughs> <sighs> you rest that night. Um, Suvi and Ursulan sleep. Uh, wait, wait, so you're just sleeping supine on a table. Where does where does Suvi uh, post up? You've been sleeping in nice, comfy beds in Citadel chantries. <laughs> it's bad here. <laughs> um, I I have a, a bedroll. <laughs> Why were you I'm out with a bedroll? I had all my gear on me. Why? <laughs> what does Ame's bedroll look like? Oh, it's about her size. <laughs> That's not helpful! So, Thank you for a mini skirt two, of a sleeping bag. Two feet shorter. Christ. <laughs> then what then what Suvi needs? <laughs> Thanks. I'm good. <laughs> and I just go and sit in a corner and kind of push like I wanna go to the like the sort of tactical best spot, which is back against a wall facing out towards the main door, sitting upright, and I will just rest a little bit. <laughs> Gotta get b- Just a little bit. Look, you guys don't understand. Steel's coming. She's gonna beat my ass <laughs> if we're not back. <laughs> um, incredible. Uh, Ame, where do you post up to take your? And are you you're taking the first watch? Or, yes, yeah. I, I said first watch, but I have no intention of waking them. Oh. Um. Uh. You see. Uh, uh. Where do you post up to take your watch? Um. I'll. I'll sort of be mobile and and sort of wander from place to place. I have a feeling that completely surrounded by the kudzu, this place is not going to be uh, very assailable. There's no, you know, the only the only things here that would kill you were, would only kill you if they got ordered to and you took care of that earlier today. Like, the, like part, the, part of the nice thing about being in a strange, choked, like, plant kingdom come to life overtaking villages is you kind of know where the threat is. Right. Uh, Both of you got choked out by plants today and you're just so chill about it. Um, as you move around, kind of keeping watch, you see the fox looks up and says, hey, uh, if you need to sleep, you know, I can keep watch too. Thank you. And I appreciate that. I'm fine. But so I don't know that I necessarily trust you to not go wandering off or do whatever it is that you want to do. If you died, I wouldn't be able to talk anymore, right? That's correct. And I wouldn't remember any of the stuff that happened? Yeah, you'd just kind of go back to your life in the forest. Make an arcana check for me. That's a 12. As you're saying that, you kind of don't know if that's... You think that's true. Yeah. Like, you're not actually sure if that's true. I don't know if that's true. But, but I, I agree. Yeah, I'll prob- you'll probably return to your life in the forest and forget all about me. And, and, you know, beds and human food and my friends. Even if I wasn't magic anymore, I wouldn't forget you. <laughs> You always just say things. You always just say things. That's so true. (laughs) Well, look, if you don't trust me, that's fine. But I'll tell you this. I'm better at smelling than you. And I'm probably better at hearing and seeing than you. That's true. I can make you a promise. Yeah? I learned about those. You don't actually make them. You don't need hands for them. No. They're just something you say. They're something you say, but that mean a lot to you. Yeah. I promise I'll always tell you what I want to do. 
I want to make sure that you're safe while you're asleep. Okay. Uh, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> and you see the fox just sort of trots off and he looks around and says, besides, you can't sleep when we're walking. I can just curl up in Ursuline's hood and snooze in there. <laughs> you're very generous, fox. Yeah, I am. I'm great. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I catch him and I give him a little noogie. <laughs> Morning comes the next day, and you depart. Presumably for Port Talon. Is there any w- manner in which you are traveling or any checks you are making as you travel? I'm feeling pretty comfortable. I feel like Ursula, I, th- I feel like until we get to the edge of the kudzu, I don't think there's, I don't believe there's any reason to be careful. Oh, I agree. I agree. I, I, um, yes, we just, I think we go along. Unless Suvi has any objections? Nope. This is spirit shit. That's all you. You journey through the paths as best you can, walking through the kudzu, trying to avoid the deeper thickets. You journey as quickly as possible, but your rest means that you are sort of Disembark- you are embarking at night, so you're like walking through the kudzu woods at night. The noises you hear are strange here because it's, you know, the greenery is so thick that it's just sort of a chorus of crickets. Like the insects have really thrived in this new world of kudzu. You move through this space, and I'm going to need a group survival check. Mm-hmm. Oh. I would be excited, Ooh, but I know how I've been a, rolling today. Oh, okay, never mind. 22. Dirty 20. Big 12. Okay, the, lower, the me- median roll is 20. Um, you quickly and swiftly make your way through the countryside and actually manage to make pretty good time. Meaning, however, that you are arriving back at Port Talon uh, with basically, like, at most hours to spare before when Steele said she was going to arrive. Like, ah. so in have other words, told us you have not, right? You haven't had time to discuss just the days of travel. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I told you. I will, I will actually ask too, like as you begin to approach Port Talent, is there anything, because like there are some bits of information that only individuals of you have. Is there anything that realistically would come up on the road that you would find, like in the long quiet, you would find reason to divulge? Wait, do we know about you, about Steel coming to town? Uh, yeah, I definitely at the very least would have told you about it on the walk over. Got it. Oh, yeah, I, I would have mentioned it on the way back, too. Like, if you're wondering why I was like, no, we, we can't stop for a minute to take a break. I have to get back into the city. Why? Because my guardian is coming. Oh. Yeah. Is it is she? Are they furious? Ma- mad? Yes. yes. Oh. Deeply. Uh, I was supposed to check in when we got back to Toma and then... uh. A lot that of things very, were happening. Yeah, oh. she doesn't care. <laughs> I didn't do what I was supposed to do, and I've just been gone, and apparently they were searching for me. It's oh. bad. And then I was supposed to I was supposed to keep it on ice at three days, and then I immediately did not do that. On ice? Yeah. You know, keep lay low, cold. chill out, oh. don't immediately walk through the kudzu to treat with a great spirit. That... Mm. Well, she'll be glad to see that you're alive. We'll be back, and she doesn't need to know. I mean, we can clean ourselves up afterwards, and, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, we can go back to uh, the place where you have, where you reserved the entire floor. <laughs> we can take a quick sh- uh, quick. Oh, my we can, God. You, got, you both can bathe there, and then we can head down. 
you pretty firmly anti-bathing at this point? I mean, firmly anti-bathing. <laughs> yeah. Don't put me in a corner. No, I like get that. it. I just, you know, when I have to. <laughs> um, like, I'm having a very good time talking about my problems, but at what point are we going to discuss the fact that you promised the meanest <sighs> thing I've ever seen that you would free her husband from, you know, the wizards? Well, her... Ahame did not put us in a situation where we had much of a choice. She yeah. would have killed all of those wizards. I'd let her out. I mean, she would have killed everyone. I wouldn't have let you let her out. Let me be very clear. Uh, no offense, but this is our world. You get that, right? This is the world for humans. <laughs> you have a world! Yeah. And it is, it is as much, they are intertwined, Sufi. They're, we don't go there. Well, you can't go there, but we can come here. Okay. And maybe if you come here, you get what you fucking get. I don't even know where to start. Ursulon? Ame. It, um, it is... Um, what did they teach you at that wizard school? To mind your fucking business, which is more than Naram can say. The people who trapped the guy at the bottom of the sea were taught to mind their business? Yeah. Mm. Stuff in Umora is human business. Except for when the spirits uh, affect the seasons and the tides and the weather and... Uh, teach the people to fish and live off the land and okay but I they mean, also choked a village to death in their rage so well, I you know, know it's, little that's of both why you have to have some consideration for them at least i mean i just no that shrine was deference was begging a spirit to not ruin lives and destroy civ civilization do you think that's fair really you think that's fair to beg to be allowed to live? <laughs> That's what we do of nature. Na nature has no ill intent, just as Orima was saying. She she has no cruelty in her, but neither does she, she have care. cruelty! She's a spirit. And we are people. Your people. The fox looks up at you, Ame. Is Umora just for humans? No, no, not at all. That's what humans have called this world. But it's, you know, no more theirs than it is ours. Ursulan. Give me a, give me a, a, give me like a insight check. Six. <laughs> God damn it. Suvi, you had that earlier 20 where you noticed how emotionally charged Suvi has been in this leg of the journey. And hearing her talk about steel and the fact that she was supposed to keep Port Talon on ice, there's maybe some of that that comes into focus, sharper focus for you. Um, as we all tell this story together, Suvi's words were so clearly about Orima and Naram and this situation and her lens being a wizard of the Citadel and looking through it that way. But her exact words were, maybe if you come here, you get what you fucking get. And I cannot help but wonder how those words impact Ursulan. Or if he, if maybe he doesn't make that connection to himself. I don't think so. I don't think in this moment, those were like, those words hit his brain and he goes to that place. Yes. Yeah. I totally, I, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, you, it's, it's so, I think there's like very clear, if you're not focusing on the words and you're just following Suvi's emotion, what she's saying is so clearly about this other thing. Yes. Um, uh, you 
continue through the long road towards Port Talon. Um, as you do so, you begin to smell it long before you can see it, the choking salt fire. You approach the edge of the kudzu, and now it is, uh, the weather has sort of turned around here at Port Talon. Uh, it's a rare sunny day in Port Talon, so the sun is beating down on a plane filled with fire. So it's all of the normal like sweat and heat of like a bright noonday sun. But you're also looking at this pale, like tan brown, soot covered wasteland where all the plant material has been destroyed. And that weird thing of fire, just you can't see fire in bright daylight. So it's just columns of smoke coming up from something out there in the distance. Um, and then you, then you see the tall slate gray walls of Port Talon. You get here about midday. You know the latest steel's going to arrive here is tomorrow morning. Oh, okay, but we made it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to disguise self again as uh, Ursula's pregnant sister. Uh, and I will, I'll throw my glamour up as we, as the walls come into view. I think Ursuline's glamour uh, fades into appearance. He drops that uh, about foot uh, <laughs> and looks like Sufi's brother. I'm just going to sort of tuck myself away and, and uh, not, not show myself. Uh Great. Go ahead and give me like a group persuasion roll as you approach the city. <laughs> I can't stop rolling eights. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I can't stop rolling natural ones. Oh no! Then I got a uh, an eighteen. You got an 18. Okay, copy that. Uh, Any so, chance it's the same guards from yesterday? Well, that's what we were rolling for. And uh, the median roll is a 10. So as you guys are just walking under the hot sun, you get closer to one of the big bonfires and you see some of the Azure Battalion walk over that are guarding that sort of like, uh, you know, that witch fire out there. Walk up with some of their matchsticks over their shoulder and say, stop, halt. Who goes there? So Lamry's gone. <laughs> My feet hurt. Sorry, sorry. We we departed the city the other night. This is my sister, and uh, um, uh, she was hoping that her uh, babe could be born in the village from whence we came. But whole thing's gone. Oh, okay. I had it. It Great. is gone. Give me a deception check. <laughs> oh, whole thing's gone. I will start to cry if I can give him advantage. <laughs> what did you want? Deception. Do I have advantage in that? No. Why? Any chance I have double okay, advantage? Give me, give me a performance check. <laughs> You've got to beat a 10 to give advantage. Come on, please. I did oh! it. Okay, you have advantage. I got more. Thank God. No, we I didn't do it. Oh, you it. didn't do it. That's that. Okay, yeah. so you start, to, you start to cry super hard. <laughs> um, and I think your like, pregnant tummy like renders through your clothes for a second of like the video game graphics of your own illusion as you like throw your back too hard. It's like, oops, that, that does the physics engine broke for a second. Um, Six. <laughs> oh my God. So had you, to fight for it, had to fight for it. So you see, you see the guard goes, Oh, I understand. So you, your pregnant sister, sister, sister not my wife, not your wife, your pregnant sister. Yes. You and then see, who's this? There's. You can see my hat sticking out from behind a barrel by the wall. God damn it. Yeah. Oh no, you're not even near the wall. You're in yeah. the like DMZ. <laughs> okay. You're in the like. You're okay. in the, the like wasteland of witch fire between the wall and the kudzu. Oh, that's my. Uh, that's my shy ward. Uh. Uh, I have a ward, and they're very shy. <laughs> Peek out around the corner and I wave. Downward, down, down. <laughs> all right, you're all under arrest. What? No, <laughs> stop. You're all incredibly under arrest. No. Why? Be, be, the, anything coming out of the kudzu is a spirit. What? What? No. Do I, I look fear. serene and magical? Spirits don't exist. That's exactly what a spirit would say. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you see they say, all right, please, kindly, you, you are all... You, no, no one has come out of the kudzu in weeks. Well, if you sound right. well, if you ask a couple of your friends, the two of us went running into the kudzu yeah. last night. And 
I stowed away in the back of a wagon. Why are we Because my ward is so shy. Why are we confessing? So you broke curfew. You ran into the wasteland. You've come back. Yes. Uh, What's your name? If you wish to know, my name is Lieutenant Briggs of the Azure Battalion. A, a soldier of the Imperium, and I am placing all of you under arrest, at the very least on breaking curfew, but certainly under suspicion of being a spirit with ill intent towards the mortals of Port Talon. You think if we were spirits, we would waste our time arguing with you, or like, I don't know, be a wind to, to death of you? Well, if you knew the first thing about spirits. Yeah, explain to me how spirits work. And I'm Please, gonna tap explain my to staff. us uh, how spirits spirit work. Spirit, explain to us. <laughs> Come on, little matchstick. Spirit, explain. So you're admitting you're a spirit. What? No, 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 no. hold on. Let's, let's let Lieutenant Briggs, who bombed out of the Citadel in what, two years, explain to me what a spirit is. Uh, give me a deception check. <laughs> Sister. Not gonna be good. 13. He rolled a two. He says, he says, I didn't, I wanted to be in the Azure Battalion. Mm -hmm. Listen, the guy next to him goes, all right, Briggs, you're going to have to, you're going to take a step back. And he's like, what? He's like, you always do this. You always turn arresting people into a conversation (laughs) and we're going to have to talk about it again because uh, it's not how this goes. You're all under arrest. Uh, put your hands behind you. We're going to manacle you right now. And then <laughs> slam the staff. Die. What's that? What? I slam the staff and drop the form and go full uh, Citadel Wizard CB. Uh, okay, you're going to have to give me an intimidate check because given the story they're running in their I mind, know. that you are a disguised spirit. Here, roll. Running. Nine. Uh, nine. Okay, so he goes, okay, so you're, We've all but confirmed you're a trickster spirit. Um, God damn yeah. it! This is so stupid. Uh, great. Uh, uh, they're gonna come over. There's there's four of them here, uh, and they're gonna come over and start to manacle you. I'm gonna kill these guys because I'm in a bad mood. Back up, and I want to send an Irulian bolt across the like front of them. Okay. Uh, uh, everyone here, roll initiative. Okay. Hey, did you think my bad mood would suddenly stop or get worser? <laughs> so Suvi, you are going first. Uh, you send a bolt as a warning shot on them. I am going to let you know, mm-hmm. killing these soldiers will change your life forever. I'm not gonna kill them. I want them to be, I want them to not arrest me. Brennan. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's what the intimidate check was for and it didn't work because the spirits. Um, so you are first to act. Uh, you see that they just see you unleash a harmful spell. They are going for their weapons. Please, okay, okay, we have to, here's the thing, here's the thing. I can't kill you without having to do a lot of paperwork. Steel will be here soon, oh God, I just, please, I am begging you. Please don't make me kill you. Please, I go here. I hate spirits so much. They're so stupid and I don't want to fight you, but I will. Uh, great. Give me a, uh, give me, we're just going to say, Start the, crying. we're going to say persuasion. <laughs> Perfect. Nine. Great. Um, cool. That's your turn. Yep. They do not seem to be swayed by it. Uh, they, the thing that really they seem to be clocking is the powerful spell that just happened. That seems to be taking most of their focus rather than what you're saying. It was a cantrip, you idiot! Uh, great. Uh, uh I think it's, it's Ursulon or Ame next? Five. Five? Eight. Eight. Ame, you are next. Um, I put my hands out and I slowly step out from behind the pile of wood that I'm in, and I was like, don't look at me, but also you can arrest me. We'll go quietly. We'll go quietly. Okay. Ursulon? No roll on that. No roll on that. You're surrendering, so they're gonna walk over to you and- I said, we'll go quietly. Yeah. We'll go quietly. (laughs) 
<laughs> Stevie's actually crying now. Oh, don't cry. I'm gonna get in trouble because I'm gonna murder them. Uh, inside check on if the if uh, how they're responding <laughs> to uh, Ame's surrender. Uh, uh, yeah, give me an insight check. Uh, Twenty one. They appear to be going. Finally, they're seeing reason. This was a really dangerous situation. There is a curfew. There's a bunch of guards. We're at war with this forest, and people walking out of it are maybe spirits. Great. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll also drop to my knees. I want to be clear that me as me yeah, and Brennan, yeah. I am an anti-fascist and an anti, and yeah. I don't like cops. But these guys straight up are like, hey, come on. Yeah. We no, gotta, of course. We gotta I, do it. I'm gonna drop on my knees and say. <laughs> I'm not gonna call you my pregnant sister anymore. <laughs> uh, Sufi, please, down. On your. We still have time to get back. It's so Steel stupid. Doesn't it need doesn't to know matter. Because now Steel's gonna know either way. It's so dumb. I might as well just kill them. No, no, don't. 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 Do don't, don't what is wrong with you? Why is that your option? You know, we're normally a lot more jumpy than this, but we're gonna let that slide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you see that the uh, Azure Battalion comes around? Yeah. Uh, uh, you are manacled, and they get you on a wagon headed back towards. Port Talon. Uh, the gates open to the city. Uh, what is Sufi <laughs> saying? I mean, you're like you're yeah. just you're just manacle. You're just here in yeah. this in this thing. You're just moving along. What is Sufi saying? You're just like weeping, tears streaming down your face. What are you saying as the wagon sort of trundles along? <laughs> I'm gonna get so in trouble, and I'm gonna take it out of your ass brakes <laughs> if she doesn't kill me. <laughs> I'm gonna have your fucking stupid little matchstick. Sophie, can you stop you threatening the You said it the I hate you. Honestly, you should have shot me out there. I don't <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Eric? That is a 17 on a sleight of hand. Can I get out of my cups? A 17 does not get out of the man. Dang it. Uh, the wagon trundles along, the gates of Port Talon open and you advance through the streets of Port Talon. Uh, now, it's with, with the rain gone and the sunlight on it, it has all the sort of appearance, like the sunlight in this city kind of turns it from this like oppressive, rainy cobblestone place. And it kind of feels like a weird museum or an old abandoned castle with the bright sunlight on it. Um, but you see busy people moving around, uh, shifted into the, like their lighter clothing. Port Talon has like a big swing of temperatures, like very freezing when it's raining and the sun comes out and it's hot as hell. I'm gonna need a, I need a luck check and I do want a Bria to That's roll it. That's so fucked up, Brennan. God. No, why? No! Two! <laughs> I don't know what's going on over it's there. It's bad here. It's bad over there. The dice are bad. I know they can go higher, but I think they forgot. Um, hold on. we are really. <laughs> this is a, this is going as poor. We just had to walk back home. <laughs> that was it. That was the goal. The goal was just to walk home. I was wondering. I was wondering if I was wondering about it because I was like, yeah. I was like, they know there's a big old wall and 100%. a lot of guards. With a, we thought we could go back the way hey, that we came. It, it was so silly and fun to get to leave. <laughs> yeah, we assumed it would be just as whimsical on the way back in. Exactly. Brandon, you set our <laughs> expectations. <laughs> My pregnant sister needs to <laughs> It was a home. good bit. <laughs> you got to know that the dice protect you guys a lot. Brennan doesn't respect bits. I want that on the record. Oh, oh, Brennan respects bits. The dice don't respect don't bits. Don't talk to my dice like that. You need but to also talk, your dice you need get, to talk to your dice need to in get some kind of way, together. right? You're my special little snowflakes just for this, and you're being bastard people. Villains. Villain is dice. You know it's bad when Brennan has to write a bunch of stuff because we're it's He's that bad. It's lore. Like, it's like, ooh, all right, well they've now <laughs> I have to create a penal system because Exactly. Even my worst <laughs> even my idiot. worst PDF is not enough. <laughs> I assume they'd at least roll a six on the luck. <laughs> so tell us about the school to prison pipeline in Umora, Brennan. Uh, campaign shift. Camp huge campaign. <laughs> Two years later after you <laughs> <laughs> Where you walk through the garden. Um, <laughs> um, uh, uh, so. You arrive at the edge of the battalion, and the first thing they're going to do is start to disarm you. 
which means taking Wavebreaker. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. You got it. We can't kill them. <laughs> we can't. We can. It would just be. Well, annoying. now you're in a barracks with like a couple hundred of them. Said what I said. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. And I want to just try to stop before they take Wavebreaker and offer up my staff first. Maybe if you touch it, you'll realize that this isn't a shitty little spirit trick and I'm a wizard and you're on my last fucking nerve. Great. Well, we'll go and run some tests on it too. Oh my God, don't take my staff! <laughs> well, we, well, we absolutely will. So we're going to take that. And Why are you like this? Someone go get Galani. Uh, give me a persuasion check, but we're going to do disadvantage because you've had a lot of chance. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay, dice. Uh, 17. You see, they look and say, Galani. Yeah. She's at the governor's mansion, where I was two days ago. Uh. Yep. Stare- Put it together. I can hear your little brain spinning. <laughs> Come on. Uh, hold hold the prisoners here. Just hold them. In a second. Don't call me a prisoner out loud to my face. I don't like that. Uh, you see that one of the guys turns around. You see, this is one of like the guards who looks like he's gonna do, he's gonna be aggressive and violent. Yeah. And you see that the guy goes, uh, 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 the just the prisoner doesn't like it, and that we're just gonna sort every, we're just gonna sort everything out. <laughs> keep the prisoners here. And the guy goes in the courtyard, and he says, "Yeah, keep him in the courtyard for a second. Um, and, you guy, what's your name? Huh? What's your name? Uh, oh, uh, uh, you see. <laughs> The PDF, the PDF pros. The PDF pros. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're uh, fully, we're fully off the map. <laughs> he says, "I'm Sergeant Laplo." Sergeant. Yes. So you're supposed to be smarter than the rest of them. Yes. Lean in real close. This is gonna go real bad if y'all don't tighten this up right now. I've had a very bad day. Please. We're kind of cute. We can just don't don't make this worse. I'll be leaning a little closer on this. Oh my gosh, this is so interesting. You call him cute? Yeah, like kinda. He's got uh, like a good nose, but like in a very aggressive way. Yeah. Sergeant Laplow huh. turns and says, "Respectfully, we're going to go get this sorted out." You see, he takes the staff. Please don't make me let go of this, because it's going to be. A lot of people's jobs when I get it back. I'm not gonna cast any spells. I'm not gonna hurt anyone. I didn't before. We could both stand here together holding it. You see, you see, <laughs> Sergeant Laplo leans into you and he goes, I've been working at the Azure Battalion for about four years. Respectfully, people who threaten the jobs are gonna get lost usually have to ask someone permission to make that happen. Okay, I understand that. And I know you're trying to check me on status here, but even if I ask permission, I bet it fucking happens. Uh, give me persuasion. Oh my God, it's stop. happening. Don't make me roll any words bad. There we go, five. Uh, he says, uh, he says. <laughs> I gotta stop talking. You. Someone has to stop me. Uh, he says, I'm taking the staff now. All right. Uh, and uh, pulls the staff away uh, and walks okay. off. Um, what's going on with Ame and Ursula? You're watching Suvi deconstruct. She is spiraling. We don't, we've ne- I've never been out of Tomo before. I don't know how hierarchy works or pulling rank. Yes, I, just, I, I, I this would, is terrifying. Uh, Suvi. Oh. Hey. What? <laughs> Took my staff. It's okay. It's You'll get right. it back. You I get just it back. Got it. Yeah, yeah. It's okay though. It's okay. He's gonna check it out, and then no. we're gonna. They're gonna let us dirty. Go. What? He's he's not. He's not gonna get it dirty. We can he's clean it. It's okay. It. He's oh. not gonna chip it. <laughs> Um, okay, you're doing great, okay? I'm Thanks not. For tra- this is so bad. Thanks for trying it's okay. to stand up for us. I don't know who I am, and I don't know how to have any authority other than what I've been given. It's okay. Well, the fact <laughs> that you have had any authority before, your authority, <laughs> the authority you had got us 
got us on a boat. Uh-huh. And it got us. And they tried to kill us on the boat. Yes, but then it, but then it got us rooms and it got us food. Uh-huh. And then we got in a fight there too. <laughs> I don't like it outside of the Citadel. <laughs> it's all right. We all this. The world is a big place with a lot going on. <laughs> I, I I move as as close as the you know. I look I look at the big Star Trek. I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna. I'm yeah, gonna you can cry. You. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you just can't leave, but you can cry if you want. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> it's like I, I get I get close to Sophie. I'm like, hey, it's okay. It's okay. We have gone through an awful lot in the last couple of days. You're doing so great. Oh, we're not. Why are you saying that? We just promised the scariest thing I think anyone in this part of the world has ever been up against. That we would do the impossible. It's okay to be scared. And it's okay to be scared of that. Yeah, we can't let that stop us from doing what we need to do. Yeah, you're doing fine. We appreciate you. And again, it's good for you to have this little cry. And maybe you should consider doing that now and again. No. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to hug all okay. Hey. I love you. It's bad. I love you. I love you, Ursula. And I'm sorry. It's, it is fine. God. We'll be fine. We're going to be okay. You're saying that, but I'll be dead very soon. No, no, no. 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 I won't no, let I'm them kill steal. you. No, you steal is crazy. She's, <sighs> no, she is. <laughs> A big carriage rolls up of the governor's mansion. So it has all the like the Syrah's Imperium gilding. It looks like this, like a giant Fabergé egg music box kind of carriage. Six white horses with feathered plumes rolls up. Um, you see Laplo comes in holding the staff now wrapped. It's wrapped up in like white silks. And you see Galani steps out of the carriage. Uh, anyone who wants to give me an insight check. Oh God. 30, 20. 19. Oh, 22. Uh, Ursulan and uh, Suvi. Um, Galani has been uh, crying recently, like red bloodshot eyes. Uh, she goes to the carriage and pulls out, wrapped in uh, sort of a blue covering cloth, like a velvet covering cloth, a massive shape. Uh, and some you see some stewards of the Azure Battalion wearing those stewards ring. Come, lift this heavy thing up, move it over, uh, put it in front of you. It's a flat thing about like 10 and a half feet tall. Stand it in front of you. Um, You see that uh, your staff is handed over to Galani. Galani does not make eye contact with you. Um, One of the stewards pulls the drape off of the shape in front of you and you see the standing mirror from the wall. Um, And you see a mirror reflecting the deck of a ship with no ocean behind it. Instead, clouds racing by uh, in a bright blue sky. And there are some people gathered on the ship, but standing there is a woman in gold armor. A woman you have not seen since she came to deliver heartbreaking news to a young Suvi at the end of that magical summer when Suvi had to learn that her parents were not coming to collect her. Uh, Steel, now older, with white scars across her face, white streaks in her auburn hair, and one of her irises gone partially white with that uh, same same sort of almost like weird arcane scarring, um, suddenly is staring at you. She is standing closer to her mirror than you are, so she is right now about nine feet tall. Um, and she looks and says, on ice is what I said. I don't think I could have been much clearer. And I had the courtesy to do this in private last time. Oh, you could, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I understand you gave Sergeant Laplow a hard time about your staff. What exactly is yours? Because I don't have anything that belongs to me. 
I have the tools of the Citadel. That's what I have. And it's a privilege to wield them. Every word is like a physical hit to Suvi. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't think. I just needed to get back in time. We could not. And that there were good. extenuating circumstances. Ame, shut up! No, no. I'd like Ame to talk. In fact, let's do this right here. That was Lou Wilson as Ursuline, Erica Ishii as Ame, Abria Iyengar as Suvi, and Brennan Lee Mulligan as everyone and everything else. Worlds Beyond Numbered is edited, designed, and scored by Taylor Moore at Fortunate Horse, with additional sound design from Michael Gelfi Studios. For even more like this, join us on our Patreon. We'll see you there.